Today we're going to show you a few basic troubleshooting skills for your Saragon licensed microwave link using the Saraview program. We're going to show you how to check received signals, alarm logs, aggregate logs for both the 24 hour period and the past 30 day history. We're going to show you how to use the loopback feature to test the individual parts of the link to help pinpoint a possible problem. Finally, we'll save all the information to text files that can be sent to our technicians for pre-mobilization evaluation. This will help you save time and money. We'll be using the latest versions of Saragon software. This may be slightly different for the versions you are running as far as the terminology, but the placement and the data is all the same. Let's get started. First, we'll open Saraview. You simply put in the IP address of the radio that you want to talk to. You then put in the SNMP community, which defaults at netman, the username admin, and the password saragon, all in lowercase. <clears throat> Your quickest indication of a problem are the lights on the front of the radio. <clears throat> if any of these five lights on the front are red, there's a problem with the link. Except for the loopback light, which we'll go through in a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, they they go in order drawer ODU cable loopback and radio if your ODU light is red as well as your radio light that means there could be a antenna out of alignment or a general hardware failure if your drawer is uh, yellow or red that could also mean a drawer failure or a possible uh, cabling problem to get the quickest pinpoint of what could be the problem you want to look at your alarm logs the first alarm are the current alarms. Is there anything that's happening to the radio right now? This radio has no alarm, so there isn't anything in this window. If the link had just gone down, it would say TX or RX level out of range or loss of communication. <clears throat> Next is the alarm log. This is the log of the past 10 days, every alarm that the radio has seen uh, in, in that time period. It will have everything from a power on event to a loss of an ethernet carrier to the transmit and receive being out of range. Let's move on to the signal level. To look at the signal level, you go to the performance tab, to the radio, again this has two drawers so we're going to go to the right drawer and you click on the RSL. The first numbers to look at are the min and max receive levels. They should be fairly close to each other and only a couple of dB off. If there is a variance it could mean a wind gust just happened possibly an antenna of alignment, but they should be fairly close to each other. Down here in the Excel spreadsheet, there is a 15 minute interval. Every 15 minutes, the radio logs the min and max RSL. If you have any problem in the past 24 hours, it will be in this spreadsheet. The table below is mirrored by the graph above. If there's any spikes, that's an indication of a problem, and you can go down to the table to find that exact moment. If you click on the history tab, <clears throat> this will show you the past 30 days average for the entire day. So you can see right here we had a spike on April the 8th and if you look right here on April the 8th we had a little bit of a spike this looks like possibly a reboot. Okay now let's look at the performance and the aggregate logs. Again we'll go radio right and this time we'll go to aggregate. These are any errors that happen on the radio interface themselves. Again, the first thing you want to look at is this very top line. This is what's happening right now on the radio. Everything below is, again, up every 15 minutes for the past 24 hours. And the same as the RSL, when you hit the history, it gives you an average of every single day for the past 30 days. You can see right here that had this radio had a problem on April 16th. And if you go down to the table, you can see that on April 16th, it did have 15 unavailable seconds. A couple of seconds here and there, 15, 20, maybe up in the 30 isn't a bad thing. It could just be a wind gust, uh, nothing to get too alarmed about. If these numbers start to get into the hundreds, that's a sign of a, a, a link problem and you should co contact us. One of the best features about the Saragon radio is the loopback feature. You can use this to test the indoor unit to outdoor unit communication and any possible hardware failure. To enable the loopback feature, you go to the maintenance tab under loopback. And this particular radio has an outdoor unit, an indoor unit, and also eight T1s. We're not going to do anything with the T1s today, we're just going to focus on the indoor unit and outdoor unit. To enable the ODU loopback, you simply click on the arrow on the ODU, and you want to come down here and set your, set your time. 
This can be used if you have a remote radio that you're not directly connected to. You can set a time limit and the radio will automatically go back to normal operation when that time limit expires. We recommend if you do this, you do it for at least 30 minutes to give it two full 15 minute intervals to collect data that we need. I'm just going to set this one to a couple of minutes and then we hit apply. It will warn you that your service will be temporarily disconnected while being in loopback. You click on yes. Now if we go back, you can see that the red light and the loopback changed. This indicates that the radio is in loopback mode. If there was a problem with a piece of hardware, perhaps an ODU or a cable, one of these two lights would go red. This one is OK. And we can verify that by going to Performance, Radio, and then the Aggregate Log. You can see here we had just one error second, one severely error second, and one out of frame. And that's just when the radio is being put in loopback. If you were to hit the refresh button, and those numbers were to continue to go up, that would indicate a problem between the indoor unit and the outdoor unit. To turn off the loopback, we will go to Maintenance, Loopback, simply click on the ODU, and hit Apply. Now your radio is running back in normal mode. You can do the same thing with the indoor unit by doing the exact same steps, and simply doing the indoor unit instead. Another great feature in the Serview software is its ability to collect all the data we just talked about into one simple file to be sent to our technicians. To do this, you go to File, Save Unit Information. We prefer this in a CSV format. You leave all six windows checked. It will get any information we just looked at plus a couple of other things. And then you select where you want this to be saved. then simply hit the save button. Okay, once it's done, you can simply go to where the file was saved to double check and make sure it got everything. You can see here, we've got everything from the alarm logs to the 24 hours to the 30 day history to the configuration reports for both sides of the drawers. Okay, well that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. If you have any questions, please call our office at 877-MAPLE-01.